empathy. Man, I long for the church to walk and embrace each other. And we must do that through the empathy we have one for another. We must know how to understand and enter in and engage each other's pain as family, as brothers, and as Christ's church. This passage, Micah 6, 8, of the things God requires, I, what sticks out to me to Moses, humility. In order to empathize with one another, we must own the humility that the gospel calls us to. So might we walk, might we walk together, black and white, as a church that embraces walking, walking, walking consciously under the onlooking eye of the perfect Father, our God and our King. Might we do that together as a family, as a church? Check out this next clip from Pastor Matt Chandler, present in Acts 29, my good bro. Micah 6, 8. He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? but to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Now, that text looks like a preacher's dream. I mean, I got my three points. I don't even have to exegete that text. I, I need an intro, an application, and maybe a funny story, and, and I'm out. This is the easiest week ever for me, except the text won't let you interpret it that way. See, the argument that the Lord's laying on his people who have in a very real sense embraced some injustice is that the only way to do justice, which is an action, the only way to do justice in a way that pleases the Lord is to love kindness and to walk in humility with God. And if you cannot love kindness, and if you are not walking in humility with God, doing justice is impossible. And, and so what's happening in Micah 6, 8 is God is calling his people into a posture of empathy. And, and here's, my, here's my whole thesis for my little 15 minutes. Our progress will only go as far as our empathy carries us. Where there is not empathy, there will be no progress. And I'm not saying there aren't things to be done. I'm saying the things that will be done and should be done will come out of empathy, not out of white guilt, not of, but out of empathy. And so it's important that we understand and root ourselves in it. And so to feel deeply empathy for another, it requires humility. Like if you're always right, if you're defensive, if you're dismissive or proud, then you don't have a chance for being empathetic, because you're so awesome, why? Why can't everybody be just awesome like you? I mean, you're just like the model of greatness. Why can't people just do you? It's been easy for you. So if you're always dismissive, always proud, you don't walk in humility, you'll never feel deeply about anyone or anything, except yourself, of course. And then empathy requires presence. You will not develop empathy online. You can develop rage online, amen? You can cultivate ignorance online, amen? You can feed your flesh online, amen? You can find people who have your narrow perspective on things and fuel your sense of rightness regardless of where you land on the spectrum of what we're talking about today. Ignorance knows no color. It requires presence, relationship, proximity, staying, steeping, meals, touch. Empathy requires presence. And then lastly, it requires sacrifice. To enter into the hurt and sorrows of others guarantees that I will lose a part of myself but I will come out more human on the other side. Without those three things, empathy is impossible and therefore justice is impossible. <laughs>